chord sheets are a very useful musical notation, which you can find down here in the bottom of the screen in ScoreCloud. Chord symbols and chord sheets can be achieved in a number of ways in ScoreCloud. You can have ScoreCloud guess the chords automatically, you can play them live, or you can play one chord at a time, or you can write them manually, of course. Let's look at how to do this as well as the chord editing possibilities available. So now I'll just sing a tune. I'll start with just checking that the sound is being picked up. Thumb, thumb. Thumb, da, dum, da, da, di, da, dum, da, da, di, da, dum, da, da, da. So when the song is analyzed, just listen through and make any changes that you want. like this little note here that I want to change. I also want it to be in another octave than my singing and I also want it to be in another clef. I also want to hide the rests before the pickup and that I'll just fix with the pickup tool. And now it's ready so then I just go to the magic wand tool and click auto chords and then ScoreCloud will guess the chords for me. So this result can be a good starting point for my own ideas. Okay, now let's rewind a bit. This feature also works if you've made several voices. It might actually work better because it's got more information to analyze. So in this case, I just used the audio overdub tool to add more layers by singing. Same thing here, just fix any mistakes first, and since I'm a, not a singer, I often get a few of those. Okay, so now I'm just using auto chords again, and this is what I get. Of course you can fiddle around with this in a number of ways, but we'll get to that later. In this case, I'm just going to change the order of the voices and I'm going to name them and then I'm happy. So. Another way of getting chord symbols is using a MIDI instrument to play the accompaniment and then analyze the playing to get the chord symbols, like this. After checking that the notes are being recorded, I just start playing. I just take away the bit in the beginning where I just tried the keyboard out because I don't want ScoreCloud to analyze that. I click analyze and then I fix the notation by taking away the mistake notes and then again I just go to the magic wand tool and click auto chords. A third way of playing chords into ScoreCloud is to play them one by one, which can be a quite nice middle way between playing all the chords live and writing them by hand. I like this because it's a quite quick way of trying ideas out. So I click the chords toolbar button, and if you have a MIDI instrument connected, you just play the chords in the boxes above the notes. This way the chords can get a lot more precise as well, like in this case where I get the extensions I play. I just move forward with the tab key and backwards with shift and tab key. And of course this all works in an empty document as well. Another way of moving forward is to repeat the same chord. 
Since it's the same chord repeated, it won't end up in the score until you change and play another chord. So the most manual way of getting chords in ScoreCloud is to type them on your computer keyboard. Click on the Chords button in the toolbar and then just start typing in the grey boxes that appear above the notes. You can copy multiple chords. You just click and drag across the chords to select them and then you select a beat and the stuff where you want to paste the chords. And then you just use the common shortcuts for copy and paste. If you select a single chord, you can edit it in the Actions panel to the right, like adding an extension and changing how the extension is written. When a chord is selected, you can choose a playback style in the drop-down menu in the Actions panel, which can also be converted into actual written voices in the score. Now I'll use the Voices Mixer tool to drag the chord symbols above the notes, like this. And then I can take away the empty staff, select it and then use Backspace key. And in this case I want to take away the rests as well, by making the top voices sub-voices of the lower voice. Of course there's a lot you can do in this tool, but there's a special video for that if you're interested. Okay, so now let's make this a nice and plain chord sheet, which will be perfect for a guitarist or a piano player. Just use this toggle menu in the bottom of the screen. In this mode, there is still lots of editing available, often by selecting something and then using the actions panel to the right. For example, you can select the bar line to add repeats in the actions panel. When the repeat is there, then I can add a first and second ending. Also, I'll just put in a double bar line and a finish bar line as well. Also, if I select the bar line, I can move the following measures down. You just select it and then you press the return key, or you can use this checkbox in the actions panel that says system break. If you do this with the first bar line in a system, it might move up to the previous row depending on how much space there is there. I'll also choose to show the measure numbers and the time signature. And I wanted to say 4-4 four, four instead, so I double click on the time signature to fix this. And the tempo marking is there. When I double click on it, I can change the tempo simply by clicking the tempo I want on this button here. I'll add some written instructions using a text box that can be found in the Add More tool. Now, when I've selected a beat like this, I can add rehearsal marks that can be found in the Add More tool. Or you can also use the shortcut, the R key, R for rehearsal. Now I want to move them a bit as well. So after adding some vital information in the top, the chord sheet is ready and it looks like this.